Glycolysis can occur without the presence of oxygen and takes place in the cytosol or the fluid found in the cytoplasm of cells. In we humans, glycolysis often provides the energy for events such as 100 meter dashes and weightlifting that require short bursts of energy. These types of activities depend on glycolysis because they happen so suddenly that the cells of the body cannot be oxygenated rapidly enough by the heart and lungs to support the second means of converting glucose into energy, cellular respiration, which requires oxygen. Glycolysis is not a very efficient process. It only releases approximately 2% of the energy stored in a molecule of glucose, which translates into about two ATP molecules produced for every glucose molecule metabolized. Fortunately, cellular respiration provides a much more efficient way of using the energy stored in the glucose. But as a distance runner's gasping for air suggests, the process of cellular respiration is highly dependent on the availability of oxygen. Cellular respiration converts approximately 37% of the energy stored in a glucose molecule into immediately usable energy in the form of between 36 and 38 ATP molecules. While this does not sound like a tremendous figure, it is more efficient than either automobile or jet engines are at converting their respective fuels into usable energy. Most cells can metabolize a variety of organic molecules other than glucose for energy, including more complex carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. But in this program, for a number of reasons, we will focus specifically on how cells convert glucose into energy. First, the cells of most multicellular organisms at some time or another burn or metabolize glucose and convert it into energy. And many types of cells, such as the nerve cells of the human brain, burn glucose nearly exclusively. Secondly, when organic molecules other than glucose are used in cellular respiration, they are usually broken down and converted into glucose or similar molecules before undergoing the process of cellular respiration. Finally, it is useful to visualize cellular respiration as a set of reactions that reverse the reactions involved in photosynthesis. And photosynthesis is usually explained in terms of synthesizing glucose molecules from carbon dioxide and water molecules in a process powered by light energy, even though other carbohydrates can be synthesized via photosynthesis.